Hello everyone, Charmin Sin here, and today I'm continuing our video series on Debian, uh, and today we're talking about networking. Now, um, I <coughs> set up this server on DHCP, uh, as you can remember from the video on when we installed Debian. Um, so right now, this is set by DHCP, which is not a really good idea for a server because you're going to have clients and stuff connected to this server, so you'll want a static IP. Now, t in order to set a static IP, you would go to etc slash networking, or sorry, network. And in here, there's a file called interfaces. So nano interfaces. And as you can see currently right now, um, we'll set to interface ETH0 INET DHCP. So uh, we'll need to change this to static. Now, a bit of before we begin on that, um, we'll start, we'll learn our first command for networking. So IF config, interface config. Um, now the, the interfaces that are located here right now, uh, physical interfaces, uh, like network adapters are abbreviated with ETH. So ethernet, the first adapter is zero. Okay. This is a loopback, uh, also known as localhost. Okay. Um, if this was a wireless adapter, it'd be WLAN zero. Okay. And then there's others. So like for a bridge is bridge zero, stuff like that. Um, now going back here. So we want to change the IP of this device. So what I normally do, I'll paste this link in the description. This is the network configuration guide from Debian uh, right off their website and uh, pretty much there's this template right here uh, which is all you'll need okay so you remove the DHCP portion and um, you'll reply you inet static okay we'll put and now this is the address so right now by DHCP I got 149 so we'll change it to 150 Okay, and you hit OK, or sorry, you uh, Control O to uh, exit out. I had a Windows moment there. Anyways, um, now after you uh, after you've set the static IP, you could just do service networking restart, and of course you'll lose access uh, through the SSH tunnel. Uh, to the server so you go to dot 150 and we're now able to see that our server is now set to 192.168.1.150 okay now the next thing we'll want to do of course is change our name servers so to change the or the DNS servers to change the DNS servers again into etc nano resolve.configuration or resolve.conf and you can see currently I have two DNS servers in here so let's say I want to change this to 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 and 208.67.2.2.2 and then 222 so the first one is Google second one is open DNS control O to save the changes control X to leave and for the next command we'll learn is ns lookup. So you do ns lookup, which is name server lookup for google.ca. And we'll check the we'll check that we're using the server 8.8.8.8, .8 which is the primary DNS server that we uh, just configured. Okay. So now NS lookup pretty much resolves a domain name to the IP address um, and sees what other IPs it has. So uh, let's say NS lookup yahoo.com. You'll see that yahoo.com uh, is located at 98.139. This isn't the only thing it's uh, that NS lookup does. Uh, this is just one of the features. So for instance, NS lookup can also look up a particular IP to its pointer record or its reverse name 
So if I do NSLOOKUP 4.2.2.2, you'll see that 4.2.2.2 belongs to level 3 and it's for their DNS resolvers. Okay. So, um, so yeah, that's definitely uh, when NSLOOKUP can also look up things like uh, MX records and uh, C name records, stuff like that. Um, so we, we can go over that later on in another video. Um, so now now that we've learned how to set an IP and uh, our DNS records, we want to make sure we can access the internet, which we kind of already proved with NSLOOKUP. But um, here's another tool. You'll do ping 4.2.2.2. So what ping pretty much does is it sends out a ICMP packet to the particular IP and that device responds with a reply. So pretty much um, you'll see you have two hosts, right? The tra ICMP packet, let's say it goes from this, this device to this device. This device responds and sends a reply. Um, now we can test for things such as packet loss. Now with packet loss, if you have a network that's act acting very slow, um, erratic and stuff, you'll check for packet loss. And what packet loss is, is that this guy sends a, re uh, a request and this device tries to send the reply, but there's a network issue in between. So it, it, the traffic can never get to get back here to send the reply. Likewise, if this guy sends a request and the request never hits him because there's a firewall, or sorry, because there's a network issue, or even possibly a firewall blocking the ICMP request, you're going to get a uh, uh, reply uh, request timed out. So if you try to ping, for instance, Microsoft.com, you can't. The reason being is that Microsoft.com's firewalls prohibit um, the ability to ping uh, their site. So this is a perfect example of like, there's no network issue right now, but because there's a firewall uh, blocking ICMP, now we're not able to ping the site. You either think it's down or have a network issue. So that's the ping command. Um, we pretty much, uh, you know, pretty much that's all. This you you use it to see if a network is reachable, and sometimes it can be deceiving. Okay, so next we'll do trace route. Now a trace route is basically the same thing as a ping, but what it does is pretty unique. So I just did a trace route to 4.2.2.2. Now what happens is is that um, there's something in networking called TTL, which is time to live. Now, by default, a ping has a TTL of 255. Um, the, th the reason th why that is, is that uh, we'll send the ICMP packet and every layer three device it hits, so every router it hits uh, or every firewall it hits, um, decre depreciates the TTL by one. Okay, so um, if I hit... 254 routers it's going to take one TTL uh, one of that count of that 255 away from the packet and come back so after 255 divide 255 routers it's considered that it's unreachable uh, you'll get something called TTL expired in transit uh, normally the the reason why the TTL value exists is to prevent routing loops or traffic loopage so if there's a loop out in the internet where one router keeps on sending the traffic back to another and they kind of ping pong around um, it doesn't go in infinity it, it only has 255 TTLs and then it just dies okay so that's what the TTL value is mainly for is to prevent the traffic just looping around the internet so what the trace route does in uh, in this case with the TTL value is that it sends the first packet out with a TTL value of one. So it's going to hit the, the hit the first router, come back. It sends the next packet to two, and comes back, and it does that over and over again for a maximum of thirty hops. So the max TTL value you're going to have is thirty. So now, according to this trace route, we've only hit twelve devices. Okay, but in the real internet, like in the real world, we've probably hit hundreds and 
if not maybe even a thousand devices because i'm tra i'm traveling my traffic is traveling from toronto uh brampton toronto or sorry uh brampton's my hometown uh but the closest city would be toronto um i'm traveling from toronto all the way to uh, i believe these servers are hosted in chicago so um the only layer the only devices that you'll see are layer three devices Anything that pretty much rips apart the packet and reassembles it, you're going to see. You won't see switches and router um, switches. Like uh, no, sorry, you're not going to see switches or any switch networks. Only routers. Okay. So for instance, like even in my home network, this is my my uh, firewall. But I also have two switches that are connected before this firewall, which you won't see. So again, only layer three devices will be shown in a trace route. Okay. So that's uh, that's a trace route command. Uh, and then another thing in trace route, you'll see uh, there's three probes. It's called. So pretty much for every hop, it also pings it three times, and you'll see here the variances in traffic so the first pack was 15 uh, milliseconds then jumped to 19 that's just the, the regular internet i mean you're going to see things like that but if you see for instance 15 and then a star and then a 15 that means that there's something called pack a loss which we sp spoke about before and if a tr if uh the tracer command tried to ping this particular ip and the experience packet loss, you're going to see it uh, in the in here by uh, represented by a star. Okay, so that's the trace route command. Um, so we've gone over NSLOOKUP, ping, trace route. Those are the main uh, troubleshooting, uh, main network troubleshooting uh, commands. Now let's say we let's jump back to uh, the network adapter let's say we want to get more information about our network adapter um, you can run a tool called ETH tool okay uh, sorry we actually have to install it first so app-get install ETH tool okay and now what ETH tool is is that uh, it's a app that helps gain tons of information about a network adapter. So all the link modes, all the duplex modes it has, is uh, does it support auto negotiate? Um, you know the current speed, stuff like that. Um, so that information will also be uh, useful. Another thing too, jumping back to the IF config. Uh, I have config if you want to see any collisions or errors or anything like that that are happening on your network you can see them here so you can see CRC errors or any overrun stuff like that um, so if your servers on the network if uh, you're experiencing network issues or slowness you'll want to see if the errors are incrementing here okay so then the next uh, the next thing I want to talk about is packet sniffing with uh, at the command line and being able to export that to Wireshark. So the first thing we'll want to do is download a tool called TCP dump. So at dash get install TCP dump. Oh, give me a moment here. I'm gonna make a small change. I don't know if you remember from my first video, um, for some reason, um, by default, it always has a CD-ROM repository uh, in the sources.list, so you'll want to comment that out. Looks like I did the first one, but not the second one. Okay. Now I can go back and install TCP dump without a problem. Okay. Now... To run TCP dump is pretty simple. So do TCP dump dash I okay ETH zero dash W um K 
capture.pcap. So what this is is TCP dump interface ETH zero, and we're going to write out a file named capture.pcap. Okay, um, and that will properly format the pcap file to be opened by um, Wireshark. Okay, so we're got we've gone ahead and captured some data. Okay. I use FileZilla as my uh, SCP um, I use my FileZilla to do SCP to my um, to my desktop okay and uh, I'll just run that command again pretty much uh, another thing too is when you run the D TCP dump without specifying uh, a a directory it goes into the directory you're in so right now that captured a pcap went to my etc slash apt okay so I do capture that pcap and you'll see it's here and copy that over to my desktop and you can open up the capture dot pcap file and then you can see the the traffic that we just captured. Okay. So one last thing I want to talk about in this video, and um, and we'll call it a day, um, is traffic monitoring. So you have a couple of options. Actually, there's a lot of options, but I'll talk about two tools. So the first one will be uh, app get install bmon so that's bandwidth monitor okay so just type in bmon and um, what this is is that it will allow us to capture how much traffic is going through the network and at its current rate okay so bmon currently is saying that there's 9.86 oh sorry 987 kilobytes re coming in and 271 kilobytes leaving this uh, device okay okay and another another tool that's a bit more useful um, app dash get install if top now why if top is more is a bit more useful is that it will also tell you the IP addresses that the traffic is going to and from. Okay, so it still tells you how much traffic uh, in total is leaving and uh, is coming and going on the network. And it'll tell you up here, it'll tell you where that traffic, what IP it's going to. So if you see, like, for instance, uh, out of your, out of, let's say, five megabytes of traffic, there's three mags going to one particular IP and you don't know what that IP is um, it could be something like a denial service attack uh, someone trying to DDoS you it could be uh, an authorized file transfer something like that so that's definitely useful okay so I hope this video uh, helps you in uh, learning Debian um, if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the video comment section below you can also visit my website shawmancini.com any questions that you have you can also email me shawmancini2010 at gmail.com and uh, you can also visit